The clamor for the sacking of the service chiefs, how much of a solution would that be for our security issue right now as a stand? Aisha, uh, you, want, you want to go for Yes, this? every solution. First of all, when somebody, it's not, look, for me, if I tell you, it's not, it's not even just about the service chief. If we really, really want to be honest with ourselves, we need to sack the commander in chief. That's where the problem is. Since we can't sack the commander in chief, it's to call on him to not sack the service chief in the sense that when people are failing, they say insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. They haven't brought anything new. They are not engaging this. Let me give the you an example. The commander in chief here being the president the himself. President, Barbara, that's the well, president. There was a call on the floor of the Senate by um, Ayinaya Abaribe asking for the resignation it's of the an opposition. Yes. That's what I would say is an opposition because he didn't get to be there. That's why he's saying the president should be sacked. So, um, for me, I keep saying it. I think, like she, she said, I think the service chief had run out of idea. They need to go. The president is just being, just being stubborn, not listening to the people. Because I believe, sincerely speaking, I think the service chief has overstayed their bound. Look, when you look at these current service chiefs, these are the people that have been with this insurgency, either as, as commanders, mm -hmm. as these. The current chief of, um, chief of army staff was the one that was in charge of the West African um, procurement in terms of his insurgency. Yes. Remember that when he came, there was, a, there was a woman that said that he has two houses in Dubai. And we, the president, everybody came with deaf ear on that. Say he has a right to have that because, but you need to look at it. Let's even look at that. The, the current chief of army staff has overstayed his bound. I think it's time for him to go. It's time for us to change strategy when it comes to fighting insurgency. The blame game should stop. We should face it on head and say, look, what can we do? Look, the insurgency that is happening. You know, let me tell you something. I have brothers that are in the military. They are right there in the northeast. Now, what happened there is the Nigerian army tend to maintain their own side and let the terrorists maintain their own side. Nobody is going out to intrude into another person. That's why the governor of Bruno State was saying, it is high time we take the fight to them. Mm -hmm. Because everybody is just saying, OK, the air belongs to Boko Haram. Don't go there. They shut down the, I don't, it's the strategy we are being used is so, in, 24, in, 21, in this 21st century, we are still closing down um, uh, uh, a town for people not to come out at a particular time. You know, I know, let, me, let me take you something you said. You did mention about changing of strategy. Uh, is this so much the changing of the second of the service chief? Because we need to provide an alternative to the second of the service chiefs. So what are they? You did mention the changing strategy. Maybe that is what we should begin to look at, not necessarily the people in there. The current service chief, are they ready to change strategy? Exactly. If they are ready to change strategy, they won't be doing it. Remember, they started with, now they, they, they came out with the, with, with, with the calm that they say they, I've forgotten the name, they call that camp. They open up the area, they say they have one huge camp, the old military will be here, they will be here for a, for a, for a period of time. When these guys are attacking the next villagers, before the military will respond. Is it not time? Is it time that you see, you, I was so upset that I heard that the Nigerian police say they went to a place, they went to a community, they fought, and they killed about 250 boundaries. Up to date, we don't even, so you know where the boundaries are. You know their community. You know that they are in a certain location. So there's a problem. Once insecurity continued so long, somebody have said it before. It was even a then um, um, late president, uh, late Sani Abacha. Sani when there is security for so long, then there, there, there's, there's conspiracy within the government. Because even the current governor of Kanasi, Erufai, said it a time ago. Mm -hmm. He said there is no presidency that he, even when he was a minister, the type of security report he received compared to what the president received. So the president needs to do something about it. The president needs to act decisively. And unfortunately, he came to power. Everybody expects him to crush Boko Haram, especially those in the south, mm. in the northeast. Because the first, he was an ex-general, he will bring sanity to the military, and we're going to, but unfortunately, I keep saying unfortunately, we are not making any progress. Rather, I think we are going back back and back by the day. Oh, let's consider the statement by the senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity, that's Gerber Shehu. He says the military is doing a good job and deserves to support of Nigerians. Do you agree with, with his statement there, Aisha? Absolutely not. I don't agree with that statement. I mean, what's there to agree with? People are being killed every day. Or is it that the lives of Ni Nigerian, Nigerians don't mean anything to them? Do you think our leaders have become desensitized to these kids? They don't and... care about the killings. For us, we are not human beings to them. All they care about is thumbprint, and every four years they get it. Now they've gotten it, and they have three more years to go out about that. They don't care. If not, how would you say that they're doing all they can? When 
people, citizens are being killed. Soldiers are complaining. They are writing letters to the president to tell them that they are not being taken care of. Their welfare is not being taken care of. Look, when you talk about strategy, for example, he may, did mention something about Buratai, General Buratai, having houses in Dubai. The military came out to defend him to say that he has a farm snake, and for, it is from the proceedings of the farm snake and also his savings that he bought houses in Dubai worth over $2 million. And I tell you, a general who has a farm that he's making that kind of money is not thinking of how to win the war against Boko Haram. Uh, I think it was uh, it's, it, Libya, Iraq that did uh, uh, what do you call it? an audit of their of their military, and they found fifty thousand ghost soldiers. Have we even done something like that? Did we try to check to shake and and uh, reform the, our military apparatus? If we do that today, how many ghost soldiers are we going to find in the Nigerian uh, military payroll? And you know what? Where ghost workers steal money from the people, from the economy, ghost soldiers take away money, steal money, and also cost people their lives. Because where there's supposed to be a thousand soldiers, and you have five hundred there and they say it's a thousand you know what will happen people are going to be killed so we haven't done anything even when it comes to intelligence guidance what have they done how come up to now we have not been able to infiltrate the camp of Boko Haram even if you to say get some equipment do, do them as decoy put some what do you call these transmitters or whatever GPS that will give us location let them take it away go after them know where they are none of these things have been done all we keep hearing is propaganda upon propaganda the other time the, uh, the, the military were saying that they were going to do, they are now going to fight this war in a spiritual way, spiritual warfare. And they brought in pastors and malams and everything, and they were praying. And you said they are winning the war? How? Oh, 